this says that I am live. So, five, four, three. Hi, everybody. Dugras here with Dugras Reports, reporting live from my house. Today is Saturday, January 13th, just after 9.30 Central Standard Time in the year 2024. If I didn't see you last week, Happy New Year, everyone. And thank you for joining me today on the live stream. The topic of the day or the theme of the day will be the diminishing returns of using multiple credit card ecosystems. If you're new to the channel, I'll just mention that this is an Ask Me Anything session. Uh, so you're welcome to ask me anything as long as it's pertinent to the world of points, miles, travel, cash back, etc. If my volume is too high or too low, please just let me know. However, um, we do have a theme every Saturday morning. And for today's Saturday morning live, the theme is diminishing returns. In other words, when you add more cards, when you add more ecosystems, are you getting enough more value, enough additional value to make that worth doing? Um, I do have a little bit of a cold I picked up on our weekend trip to Chicago, so I apologize if that's coming through on the feed. Brian Clark is on board and says, hello, good morning to you, Brian. Appreciate you being on board. I have placed a poll up above that is uh, something that will remain open throughout most of the live stream. And it's asking the question, is it worth diversifying beyond your first two transferable currencies? So for example, let's say that you've already got Chase and Amex. Is it worth adding Capital One? Is it worth adding Citigroup? Is it worth adding, I put maybe Wells Fargo because they still haven't told us who their transfer partners are. Um, so not very many votes, only five votes yet, not enough to, uh, make a difference. We'll check back on that later. So let's get into today's topics at least a little bit. So there were a couple different things that inspired this for me. Good morning, John. Sorry about that. I'm going to try my best not to cough. And if I do hit the mute button. A couple of weeks ago, I stumbled across a content creator that I had not yet run across. His name is John Cannon here in the community of points, miles, cashback, etc. In one of his videos, he talked about the city ecosystem, city group cards, and how they are not worth it to him, maybe. And I might be oversimplifying that, um, but I really liked that video. And it inspired me to think about City a little more. Many of you know that not too long ago in late December, I applied for the City Double Cash, which would have completed my City Quadfecta of cards, and they denied me based on velocity. So that plus the fact that my City Premier is coming up for renewal either later this month or sometime in February means that I have to make that keep versus cancel decision. Now, the city premiere is only a $95 annual fee, but that's still very real money. Welcome aboard to the 16 people who are watching. I appreciate it. And slap that thumbs up button, the like button, if you would. Um, so yesterday I tried something brand new. I recorded a video that I'm calling the Dugras Lecture Series. And this is a video format that at least that I'm trying. It's a long form video. It was about 38 minutes long, no special editing. It was just one shot straight through. Uh, I opened it up to my members to view it uh, already, and that'll be released to everyone else in the not too distant future. Um, the point of that was I was just trying to decide if it's worth me to have City or if it's worth the added value. And with the example of the city premiere, um, what I found when I did the math is that because I already have a pretty uh, thick portfolio of cards, um, 
I'll hold this far enough back. The numbers don't show because I don't think my camera quality is good enough. <laughs> but, you know, we've got Chase here at the beginning. Uh, we've got, that's still Chase. We've got American Express. We have now have City. And then if I go beyond City, I've got Capital One. And I've got U.S. Bank. And then my Misfit cards that are just one card per issuer. Fifth, Third Bank, and Barclays. Um, how much, oh, and then Wells Fargo too. I didn't show Wells Fargo. Um, there they are, Wells Fargo. Um, how much extra value does adding the C city ecosystem to what I already have give me? And I think the conclusion I've come to is not a lot. Now, as one sub point of that video I recorded, and this is what today's topic will be, uh, I talked about diminishing returns. Uh, let's just say, as an example, that you have 2% cards that give you 2x on everything, and then you up that to 3x by adding something, you know, just as an example, dining. So the city premiere gives 3x on dining. Let's say before that, all I had was the Amex Blue Business Plus and got 2x on everything, including dining. Well, how much good does that extra 2% give me? Excuse me, that extra 1%. How much good does that last 1% give me? I see some people joining in here, including uh, Allison Ray Hannigan, someone with the last name Davenport. I'm sorry, it's cut off on my screen. Devil Davenport, uh, Matt Clausen, and John McKinstry. Good morning to all of you. I'll get to the uh, comments over there in just a little bit. But first, I'm going to take just a moment here to share my screen and give a visual illustration of what I'm referencing. Yeah. Uh, Quality here doesn't get very diminished when I share my screen. It always dips a little. I can see I'm lagging. I apologize. But this will give you the idea of what I'm going for. So let's just look at the category of dining. Now, this is an estimate where um, back in 2018, and then I applied a rate of inflation, uh, we spent somewhere around $3,400 a year in this one category. So if you had a 2X card that got you two points on everything, you'd be getting 6,800 points. Now, going from no points, if you were just a cash user or a debit card user before you got in the game, to 6,800 is pretty good. If you bump that up to a 3X card, such as the City Premier, now you've moved from 6,800 to 10,200 points per year. Now, I'm not counting sign-up bonuses. This is just your normal spend. Now, 3,400 points is your extra or your difference between 2X and 3X. 3,400 points is nothing to sneeze at, but uh, the rate of increase has started to diminish. So going from 0 to 6,800 is a big gain. Going from 6,800 to 10,200 is a more modest gain. It's half as much of a gain. And then going from 3X to 4X is another 3,400, and I'm thinking of the Amex Gold in this case. So let's look at a different graphic here. And by the way, notice the happy people dining here because that's what dining always looks like. Let's talk about it in the context of annual fees. So say you've got a 2X on everything card, and again, it's like the Amex Blue Business Plus or the... Um, active cash from Wells Fargo or the city double cash, something like that. Annual fee wise, the 2X is at no cost. So that first 6,800 points you got didn't cost you anything at all. Now the bump from 2X to 3X, say you add in your city premiere uh, to add that in. And, and I realize you're probably not only going to use it on dining, but I think the point still stands. Let's just say you use it on nothing but dining, um, you're going to pay a $95 annual fee and you got those extra 3,400 points. So how much did it cost you to get those extra 3,400 points? Well, if you don't consider any other spending or any other benefits of the card, it cost you 2.3 cents per point. 
Now, would you buy City Thank You points at 2.3 cents per point? Generally, I would say no, maybe in a few specific use cases. If you know you're going to be getting 4 or 5 cents per point on a big time redemption, you would. But I don't think most people would. And obviously, you could scale this up if it's a bigger category, like um, groceries, for example, could be a lot bigger. And then I'm thinking of Forex. I'm thinking of the Amex Gold. Uh, so now you've gone from 10,200 points up to 13,600 points. Those last 3,400 points, uh, if we take the difference between the $95 and the $250 and then divide that into the extra 3,400 points, you're buying those last few points at 4.5 cents per point. Now, is anyone going to take that deal? I really doubt it. I, I sure wouldn't buy Amex points at 4.5 cents per point. Just like the graphic, you're kind of handing your money over for not much of a bigger benefit. Now, I will really acknowledge that that is only a small part of the story because if you get, let's say you already have a pretty thick ecosystem, you're getting at least 2x on everything. Um you're probably going to move from 2x to 3x in more than one category. All right, well, let's pause that. That gives you an introduction to today's topic, and we'll uh, come back to that, think that through a little bit in, in the context of a more complicated example a little bit later. Let me catch up with the questions here, and then I can get into the community tab questions as well. Uh, Allison Ray Hannigan says, good morning. Daryl Davenport, excuse me, Devel Davenport says, good morning. Matt Clausen is in the house. Matt Clausen is a channel member, a Dugras diehard. For only $3 a month, you too can become a Dugras diehard. If you were a Dugras diehard, right now you could be watching the video I recorded last night because it's members only. Uh, also, you'll have access to other videos. You'll be able to participate in some member only chats, etc. Says this, City is interesting. The double cash and Premier are solid for every day, but City doesn't allow for huge point pools. Um, that's another kind of diminishing return, and I agree with you 100% there, Matt. It's hard to earn lots and lots of City points. So we often say things like, City is a great ecosystem for someone that only wants three or four cards, only wants one ecosystem. That's true. Let me ask you this, of the people who are inclined to watch my videos, how many of you and other people like you do you think would be satisfied with only having City, that one ecosystem? Probably not very many. John McKinstry, also a diehard, says, good morning. Engineer, engineer is on board. A fellow Iowan says, good morning, Doug. City has great options for earning and transfer partners and cash options. City weak points are related to benefits for travel and purchases. I prefer Chase, Capital One, and Amex. I think I would agree with all of those. Uh, in fact, not only are their purchase protections weak, they are non-existent travel protections too. Um, De Devel Davenport asks, what do I think about the PayPal credit card? No YouTuber seems to cover it. Well, uh, I'm just going from memory here. Uh, I believe the PayPal credit card gives... 2% cash back on everything and 3% uh, back on PayPal purchases. Um, it's sort of like I mentioned earlier in the video. If you've gone from a habit of just using debit cards up to um, this is your first credit card and you get that PayPal credit card and use it for everything and pay it off on time every month so you never pay interest, you have jumped your game up big time. Um, the reason I think you see that no YouTube ever covers it is most of us that like to maximize credit cards, um, we don't get excited by 2% cash back because one, there's no transfer partner, so there's no way to turn that cash back into something greater than a penny per point. So even a really simple example, like you know a Chase setup where you have a couple of their no annual fee cards and the Sapphire Preferred. At a bare minimum, I'm looking for my calculator here and not seeing it. That's okay. I can use my phone. At a bare minimum, you can always use the travel portal and get 1.25 on everything. So if you take two 
times, oh, I've got to get this on the screen, times 1.25. That functionally means you're getting at least two and a half uh, cash back equivalent on everything. So just that simple little tiny setup beats the PayPal card. So I'm not going to disparage anyone if they are not into the game and they just want cash back and they just want a super simple setup. The PayPal credit card could be a good, uh, good option. Key Key Adventures is on board. Welcome aboard, Key Key Adventures. Says this, city transfer partners are underrated big time. I have said that myself in the past. Um, you'll have to either join as a channel member <laughs> or wait till next week when my video discussing uh, the pros and cons of city come out because I do discuss that exact option. Uh, what do you mean by point pools? I'm, I'm not sure what that question is. So let me keep reading. Maybe maybe it'll be answered here. All of the city cards technically earn, can earn thank you points and pooled into one thank you point account. Yep, I'm aware of that. Uh, you do have to, I believe, call them. I did that when I added the city premier because I already had a rewards plus. I had to call them. I have to call them again and do it with my uh, custom cash. I tried last week when I was off work. And the customer service said their system was temporarily down, so they couldn't do that, which kind of annoyed me. John says, I think City is strong for domestic travel, especially road trips. By the way, good morning, John. Uh, not so much when it comes to flying, travel protections, etc. I will always transfer City points out for that reason. Sorry, folks, I'm having some post-nasal drip here, and I don't want you to have to hear me. I'm so sorry. I sincerely apologize for that. Uh, so, John, what do you, what would you use City for on domestic travel, for transfer partners and or cashing out? Kiki says, cheapest in terms of annual fees, very little overlap. Yep, I agree with that. I just use 60K city points transfer turkis for business class trip to Manila. Crazy value. Uh, Turkish is somewhat unique. It's a Capital One and a city transfer partner. So if you get a truckload of value out of uh, Turkish miles and smiles, it might be worth keeping. Matt Clausen says City just doesn't do huge sign-up bonuses or ways to get bigger sign-up bonuses. They also have the consistent 48-month rules, so you can't hack them like Chase or Amex. I agree with that as well. Okay, well, let me turn to the community tab now. Well, before I do that, I just had a couple other pieces of canned content I wanted to get to on my handy-dandy list here. Uh, first of all, a Dugras data point. So I always like to share data points of things I'm experiencing that might impact you, the viewer. So uh, earlier this week, I published a video talking about a big problem that U.S. Bank has with their altitude reserve, specifically as it relates to mobile wallet purchases. So I noticed that on January 1st and beyond, I had made four purchases Unfortunately, all four of them in the U.S. Bank app and their website, well, I didn't check the website, but at least their app, were coding as 1x. It should give you three points per dollar on mobile wallet, which is totally the whole reason why we do it. And then you can use that with real-time rewards for one and a half cents per point, effectively giving you a return on any tap-to-pay spend of four and a half percent cash back equivalent. However, since it was only coding as 1x, it completely ruined it. If it's only going to give me 1x, I might as well use, you know, some other card, my uh, Venture X or something like that, at least get two points. Um, I was hoping that that would be resolved when the statement publishes. I had a statement that closed on January 9th. Now, you know, it always takes a couple days for the statement to show up. Um, I didn't see it until this morning. So I went in and looked at my statement. Now on the statement, U.S. Bank doesn't list line item earnings uh, in terms of point value, but they do give you the total. I was thinking, well, maybe it's just a display problem and behind the scenes, they're going to post the correct amount. Unfortunately, that was not the case. So when I did the math on my statement, basically 
They gave me 3X for all mobile wallet purchases up until December 31st. And then on the four purchases that I made, a couple of which were over $70, so not tiny, um, the four mobile wallet purchases that I made since the new year, um, they only gave me credit for one point per dollar. Now, they said they're fixing that. Unfortunately, seeing that it's not just a display issue, it's actually a coding issue, did damage my confidence a little. So um, before I saw the statement, I was thinking there's a 90% chance U.S. Bank rectifies this. Um, now that it's actually on the statement, I'm thinking maybe there's only a 70% chance they rectify it. And don't get me wrong. I'm not saying they're taking away mobile wallet purchases. They would have to give notice on that because of laws and regulations. I think it's just a mistake. Um, my question is when they fix the mistake, will they fix it like, okay, it's not going to happen again, or will they actually go back in time and make us whole? Um, and will they go back in time and make us whole without us having to take any kind of excessive or we really shouldn't have to do anything at all. This was the bank's mistake. So it should be fixed automatically. Um, and I would even argue if it takes more than another week or two, we should get some extra points as sort of like interest because right now I've earned those points. They should have posted to my account. I can't use them. And that's not fair to me. That's, I could even argue a violation of the terms of service. But uh, time will tell if they will fix that in a way where everybody's automatically made whole or if I have to call in and complain again. Um, I'm hoping it's the former that it will be fixed automatically. Jake Vanderplug is on board. Welcome aboard. Jake Sledge is in the house. Welcome aboard, Sledge from Sledge Inc.'s team. Says U.S. Bank wouldn't even give me a business checking account. Wow, shame on them. They are kind of hard to get into. I'm fortunate that uh, I had a kid's checking account with Union Bank and Trust Company of Ottumwa, Iowa, all the way back to probably the late 80s. <laughs> when I was a kid, they gave you this deal where your parents ran it, but it was a savings account for kids. If you made a $20 or more deposit at least once a week, they would give you a coupon, a physical coupon for a free hamburger and small fry at McDonald's that you could then take to your local McDonald's and turn over uh, and you would get your hamburger and fries. My dad was very generous and always paid the extra 10 cents to upgrade it to a cheeseburger instead of just a hamburger. Uh, anyhow, at some point in the mid to late nineties, Union Bank and Trust Company got bought out by First Star and First Star eventually merged with US Bank. So I ended up being a US Bank customer accidentally for well over 30 years. Wong Wei Travels, a big time content creator is on board. Morning to you, Wong Wei. I also just wanted to mention briefly that I have now uh, exceeded 1400 subscribers on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much, I really appreciate all of you. It seems not that long ago, I think it was somewhere around April or May of last calendar year. I crossed the 1,000 threshold, and that took me almost three years. So uh, thank you. Thank you for the extra 400 who have gotten on board within the last seven or eight months. Thanks, Jake. Appreciate that. All right. So I need to go to the community tab. Every Friday, if I remember at least, I post a uh, community tab topic, or not a topic. I post a post. That sounds very repetitive. I apologize. I'm going to share my screen here. And most, you ask me anything for people that either want to get their questions in in advance or just want to, uh, aren't able to join us for the live stream. And I generally share a picture and ask you to guess where the photo was taken. Uh, here's the picture. Let me rephrase that. There's the picture. Sorry about that. Uh, so if you want to guess what the picture is, no one has got it so far. First question on the community tab. This was asked by AP. Now you'll notice it has my picture here. I don't know why, but every once in a while, YouTube won't show you the pictures or it won't show you the comments. So I have to manually enter them from my creator notification.
My inquiry is in the gamification of credit cards and rewards. Essentially, I'm asking your thoughts, credit cards, and the efforts they use to manipulate your behavior and encourage you to spend more. Things like small credits, offers, promotions. Even the subs going up are an effort to push you to spend more, things of that nature. Thank you, AP. AP is another Dugras diehard channel member, $3 a month to get extra content. Um, oh, and I also wanted to mention before I forget, before the chat started, uh, someone joined with the name Ryan. I can't actually see it right now. I apologize. Thank you for joining, Ryan. I really appreciate that. If you're still here, just pop a note and I'll say your full name. <laughs> So this question is a little um, tricky. And like I said, I spend all day talking about it. I remember over a year ago, I shared on my personal Facebook page one of my videos or a picture related to a video or something like that. I don't do that anymore. And here's part of the reason why. So, uh, you know, for most people that I know in real life, don't give a crap whatsoever about what I do in the worlds of points and miles. If we take a nice vacation, I share pictures. A few people might, you know, click the like button, but uh, I've given up on proselytizing normal people. But anyway, before I made that decision, it was probably close to two years ago, I shared something about credit cards. And in the comment section, someone uh, said something like this, and it, it was kind of your standard anti-credit card comment, and there's a grain of truth there. Be careful with using rewards credit card that give you 1% or 2% cash, cash back on everything. Many studies have found that people overspend when they use credit cards. You know, there was some study from like way back in the early 90s that the reason why McDonald's decided to start accepting credit cards was because they found that the average consumer will spend about 7% more if they put it on a credit card rather than if they use cash. Now, I don't doubt the validity of that comment. I think it is a true statement if you're just talking statistics and the population as a whole. The snarky part of me wanted to say something like, hey, if you're not able to control your spending, then this isn't for you. But I am able to control my spending, so I spend the exact same amount, whether I use a credit card or not. And I believe that's true. But you do have to check yourself before you wreck yourself. I have been tempted to think every once in a while, like, should I go out to eat or not? Well, I'm getting 4% back on my Amex Gold or Business Gold or whatever. Meh, yeah, I'll do it. Uh, that really shouldn't be a deciding factor, but sometimes it is. So you have to be really careful. And I guess it's one of those things you have to internalize and just ask yourself if it influences you. As it relates to small rewards, um, I used to do chase offers pretty diligently. Um, I've for the most part stopped doing that. And I do have to admit it kind of impacted my behavior. Not a lot, but like, you know, if I was going to go get fast food and I had five different places to choose from and I just couldn't decide. Sometimes I would check my chase offers to see if there's anything on there. It's like, oh, Burger King. Well, let's go to Burger King. So I decided to go to Burger King instead of McDonald's. So yeah, that does impact my behavior a little bit. I have since stopped doing that. And and I, I would take your feedback. I guess I don't have a strong opinion. Should you let that kind of thing influence you or not? Now, increased sign-up bonuses. If they're trying to manipulate my behavior and they're willing to drop a bunch of points on me, Sign me up to be manipulated, you know, like the Amex Gold, excuse me, Business Gold. I got a targeted offer for 150,000 Amex points if I signed up for the Business Gold. And yes, I realized at the time, $295 annual fee. Go ahead and manipulate me, Amex. I'll sign up for that offer all day long, five or six times a year if you want to keep throwing that at me. So that one doesn't bother me. I think kind of the bottom line conclusion is, Yes, credit card companies have marketing budgets. Yes, they try to manipulate your behavior to spend more. Yes, they want you to go into debt and pay them interest. That's not a surprise. But those of us that are watching this video and videos like it, we are a minority within a minority. Um, so I think 
If you're in this game, you should already have enough self-discipline to avoid that. We've got an advertisement coming up in three seconds, so let's take our first intermission, and then we will resume. I'll be back in one minute. All right. Thanks for your patience. I'm back. Let me catch up with the comments here. Uh, I will also mention now that I have channel memberships, I also have super chats enabled. So if you want your comment to rise to the top or you just want to thank me for the content I've created, feel free to drop me uh, two or three or four bucks down in the super chat section. And if you did, I would greatly appreciate it. No obligation, of course. John McKinstry says, I live outside of the footprint of U.S. Bank, but I was able to get a checking account with them through State Farm Insurance. So that's one way to get into U.S. Bank. Hey, that's cool. Thanks, John. I know um, the Altitude Reserve used to have a policy that you had to have an existing relationship before you could apply. Um, I think they dropped that requirement. Let me know if you know the answer to that. Um, let's see. Filmo 78's on board says, good morning. Literally chiming in as I born one of board, one of the only flights that will leave Buffalo today to say, hit the like button to support Dugras. Thanks Filmo. Appreciate that. Filmo is uh, one of my most dedicated diehards. And I really appreciate him. Uh, he gave away some free channel memberships back at Christmas time. He's trying to get to Charlotte, North Carolina and move out of New York. Yeah, Buffalo, I think, had a lot of snow. We might follow up with that. Uh, here in central Iowa, where I live, we have received probably about 13 to 15 inches of snow since the beginning of this week. Uh, got about a foot on the driveway right now that I need to clear out as soon as this live stream is done. Oh, uh, let's see here. Sledge says, I have YouTube Premium, so I'm just staring at your bed. Ha ha. Sorry about that. Those of you who don't know, I made the decision about five or six live streams ago that um, for people who don't have YouTube Premium, usually about 30 to 45 minutes into every live stream, an ad will pop up. And rather than just sitting there and doing nothing, I am going to get a drink, go to the bathroom during that time. Uh, so if you want to do that during my future intermissions, you can as well. All right, let's get back to the community tab and answer some more questions that folks have had. Thanks for your patience. I know it always takes a moment or two to switch back and forth here. Next question is from, oh, hey, of the man himself. Filmo78 says, I won't be able to watch the live as I am traveling, hopefully. And then later says, one to three feet of snow expected in Buffalo is really putting my multiple currencies to work with all the cancellations and reroutes. Ouch. One to three feet of snow. Um, but the actual question is this. What's the biggest travel on point snafu you have overcome? Um... I can't really think of like a big snafu that I've had that I made myself. And I'm not sure if snafu you mean I made a mistake or somebody else made a mistake. So 
I will go over the biggest somebody else made a mistake that I have ever encountered. How about that? So in the year, it was either 2021 or 2022. I think it was the fall of 2021. We're kind of still in the biggest, thickest part of the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, I shouldn't have said that. YouTube might censor me. Oh, well. Um, I am flying to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania on Southwest Airlines. And when I get there, I am going to attend a football game at Pitt University. I'm not a fan of Pitt University. I was just looking for something to do on the same day that I landed. Pitt plays in Three River Stadium, which is the same stadium that the Pittsburgh Steelers play in. And I thought it would be really cool to go to a game in an NFL stadium. Uh, Steelers tickets are going to be very expensive. I think starting at $200 and up, if anybody knows, let me know. But I could still get a NFL stadium experience by going to the college game that was being played there on a Saturday middle of the day. I think it was like 15 bucks a ticket. So I bought my ticket. Um, I also used the parking spot, an app to pay for a parking spot not too far away, and then walk across the river and go to the game. So the game started at 11 o'clock Eastern time. I took an early morning flight from Des Moines. It was like 6.30 a.m. down to St. Louis, had a brief layover, and then St. Louis to Pittsburgh. And it had me landing, I think, at um, somewhere around about 10.15 in the morning. So I knew that was an hour and 45 minutes by the time I get off the plane, go to the rental car counter, get my rental car, drive into the main part of Pittsburgh because the Pittsburgh airport is on the outskirts of town. I'm probably going to miss the first quarter of the game. I might even miss the first half of the game, but I just want to have the experience. It's not that I'm a fan of the team per se. I had made a reservation with Avis. And when I got there, there were two different problems. Uh, Problem one, and the minor problem that I think I could have resolved, was related to something called a rate code problem. And I won't go into details here, but I did a whole separate video about it. So if you want to look through my videos, it's called something like Avis rate code problem. I don't remember the exact details. They couldn't find my reservation. And then they could find it later, but there was some problem. They couldn't attach it to me. And I think it was because basically I reserved through Priceline, but then I loaded the reservation into my um, Avis preferred customer account. And I had somehow attached it accidentally to a rate code that I wasn't eligible for. Like maybe I found one on Tasty Deals or something like that. Uh, I do give you the recommendation, like let's say you go to some third-party website and find a special rate code for a rental car company. Just because you can find it doesn't mean you can use it. I've done that in the past. Like, let's say you get a rate code for all employees of Coca-Cola. Well, I don't work for Coca-Cola. And you attach that to your reservation. I've never had anybody ask me for proof that I work there, um, but sometimes it creates problems just attaching it. So we overcame, I think I could have overcome that obstacle after about an hour, But the second problem, the much bigger problem was they ran out of cars. And I mean that in the literal sense. They literally had no cars available. So there was a line forming. There was one employee. It was an older lady. And I felt bad for her because I know it's not her fault. It was gross mismanagement by Avis. But basically... Um, what happened is in the long run, they had people waiting in line to get cars who had reservations and it was taking like 45 minutes per customer. And I remember this argument broke out. This one guy's like, wait, I'm a preferred customer. I pay for this. Why am I having to wait in line behind regular customers? Cause she was going every other line, the preferred line and the regular customer line. And there's no good answer there because if you do the preferred first, then the regular customers will never get their cars. It reminds me of that Jerry Seinfeld bit where it's like, you're good at taking the reservation. You've got the taking part down. The part you lack is holding the reservation. So um, I know that was a result of the pandemic that Avis um, sold a lot of their cars, as a lot of car rental companies did in 2020 because they were hemorrhaging revenue. 
Um, but basically they did what airlines did. They overbooked. You know, you would think if you have a hundred cars at any given time, you should only rent out 90 of them because if someone doesn't return their car on time, you're going to have a problem. Plus you need turnaround time. But what they had done, I picked up by kind of listening to the radio communication is they had booked, if they had a hundred cars available, they had booked exactly a hundred of them. And people were returning their cars later than expected. So if they were supposed to return them at 10, they weren't returning them to 11. So basically, Avis was bringing cars in. They were giving people the option to take a car that wasn't even vacuumed out or cleaned if they wanted to, or they could wait for it to be cleaned. But basically, based on the size of the line, it would have been four to six hours before I would have even got a car. So I was going to miss the game no matter what or go with a different rental car company. There was like an enterprise there. There was Dollar. There was a couple others. And every single one, I think, um, what's the generic equivalent of Avis budget? I think every single one of them that had a sign up that says reservations only, no cars available. So basically what I ended up doing is just saying, well, forget the game. I'm not going to make it, which I was disappointed. But I mean, what choice did I have? So I basically made a reservation with Dollar, one of their competitors, for the next morning. I was staying at the Hyatt Regency at the Pittsburgh airport, connected to the airport by a skywalk. So I could literally walk to my motel and just chilled out for the rest of the day in the motel, watch some TV and stuff, and then started my adventure the next day. But I did miss the um, football game, which was a big bummer. Um, there were two lessons that I learned from that. One lesson was um, it put a strike in the Avis column. That wasn't strike three, but I did eventually have three strikes with Avis that made me change away from using them. I actually used to use them predominantly because I thought it was cool that you could put their points to another program. I think I put mine towards IHG. Um with the altitude reserve, I got some sort of preferred status for free, which meant I almost always got upgrades. I could skip the counter. The three strikes with Avis were as follows. So first, and this is in no particular order, the incident I just went over, they literally ran out of cars. The second strike against Avis was there was one time that um, I made a reservation and they didn't honor the rate at first. So I sent them an email they didn't respond to the email. However, when I got to return the car, I walked up to the little booth in the parking lot, talked to a very nice lady who fixed it. But they responded to my email like four days after she fixed it and gave me completely different information than what she told me. And some of the information that Avis gave me in email was verifiably false information. Uh, for example, they told me that I checked my car out at a certain time, which caused an overage fee, and that explained the reason why they didn't honor the original rate. I had time-stamped photos and videos of when I checked the car out and checked the car in, proving that that was objectively wrong. Um, they also said they were able to see the time my flight landed, but I was able to go back and pull up previous emails that they had charged me the higher incorrect rate before the plane even landed. So the representative who answered that email literally just made stuff up. And I'm guessing this was a situation where he or she didn't have enough training. So the customer service representative got a question they couldn't answer and turned to the person sitting next to them and said, what should I say? And say, just say you returned your car late. Just say the plane landed late. Just literally they made stuff up because they didn't know why it was happening. Um, and then the third, and I actually have a video about that too. It's called like laughably bad customer service from Avis. Um, and then the third reason was I had a trip last April where I flew into Panama City Beach, Florida, flew out of Pensacola, Florida. Um, so it was a one-way rental. And when I returned the car at Pensacola, I found out that Avis had given me the wrong car. I don't just mean the wrong type of car, like they gave me midsize instead of an SUV. They gave me the wrong vehicle. So on my rental agreement, it said, you are renting a Toyota Highlander with license plate 123. 
the keys they gave me were actually for a Toyota 4Runner with license plates XYZ. And when I turned the car in at Pensacola, the lady who scanned into the system said, that's weird. Our records say you already returned the car yesterday. And she said, is this a, and then the model of the car and the license plate number. And I looked at my rental agreement. I was like, and I'd taken a picture of the license plate after the fact. Uh, no, that's not the car I'm driving. And she like walked over and looked at it. It's like, oh, they gave you the wrong car. Basically, someone had taken the keys and I assume inadvertently switched them and put them in the wrong envelopes. And because I was preferred plus, they didn't like choose my car. They chose my car for me, but they literally just handed me the envelope and I walked out to the parking lot and took it. So fortunately, nothing bad came of that other than I had to stand in line inside Avis on the day I was flying home for about an extra 35 minutes just to make sure they documented it. Um, a lesson I learned from that was, well, and the bad thing was, what if the other guy had gotten a wreck? Then a car would have been damaged that was checked out under my name. Or it would be unfair to him equally if I returned the car late or if I got in an accident and it was noted to some other person's account. That would be equally unfair. Um, so fortunately, that never happened. There was never any accident. There was never any long run ramifications, but I sure kept a close eye on my credit card statement for like four or five months after that. So I learned a couple lessons from that. Lesson one was always look carefully at your rental car agreement and the license plate of the car they give you and compare them to make sure they're the same. Even if it's the kind where you pick, uh, you go to the aisle pick and you go to the booth before you drive away from the booth, make sure it's right. Secondly, always take a picture of your license plate that is time stamped. I always take pictures of the car on the inside and out anyway, in case they say I damaged it. But I hadn't gotten the license plate generally, so always do that. And then the final lesson of all that was, sorry for the huge tangent here, strike three Avis, you're out. I'm not renting from Avis anymore. So right now I'm on board with Hertz. I know like 0.000001% of people with Hertz got arrested a year or two ago. Um, but so far they've treated me well. I've been able to skip the checkout counter and I haven't had any issues along those lines with Hertz. So if you want to, uh, give me any advice along those lines, let me know. I know national has better service, but national isn't always available. Who, sorry, that was a big tangent. Um, Cesar Joel has showed up saying, sorry, I'm late. John says, I can see why you're not a big fan of Avis after all that. And, uh, Cesar says, happy to see you all here. Cesar also likes hurts back to the community tab to answer some more questions there's only i think two sorry it takes a few moments to toggle back and forth i found if i go to the tab and don't do anything i'll give a blank screen i have to go back to my original live streaming tab all right hey i just saw caesar joel and here's a question from caesar joel if you could pick one of the following cards with zero dollar annual fee for the rest of your life, which one would you get? The Platinum, the Venture, or the Sapphire Reserve? Now, Cesar, I'm going to assume you mean the Venture X because uh, kind of the three big ones. But if I'm wrong, correct me. So uh, the big annual fee cards that are the feature cards from Amex, Cap One, and Chase. I'm going to be honest. I, I didn't really put a lot of thought into this question. I didn't see it until late last night. and uh, just kind of went to bed <laughs> um, for the rest of my life. I feel like I should say the Amex Platinum, but uh, because my travel patterns might change, I might become a big time, you know, businessman who travels 20 times a year and wants all the Centurion lounge access. But so far, that's not been the path of my life. Um. So then it comes down to the Capital One Venture X and the Sapphire Reserve. <sighs> right now, at this exact moment, I'm getting more value from the Capital One Venture X than I am from the Sapphire Reserve because they have no annual fee authorized users. And being with a family of four, that's just enough to be above and beyond the limit of two guests that the Sapphire Reserve gives you. However, two things come into play. One is 
in three years, my kids will finish high school and will be out on their own. So they'll probably still travel with us some, but not nearly as much. Secondly, um, I don't trust Capital One to not devalue further. So I could easily see a scenario in the future where Capital One takes away the free authorized user on the VentureX. They don't give you the Capital One lounge access or they close one of their lounges or they charge guests $30 to get in or something like that. Whereas I trust Chase more to keep things the same. They're not always exciting, but um, it was uh, Joe Barreto said in his live stream recently, Chase is boring and predictable, but there are some good things about boring and predictable. So if you forced me to answer right now, I think I'm always going to get enough use out of the Chase Sapphire Reserve that if I could only have one premium card, that would be the one I'd pick. I'd put my trust in Chase. They have generally not failed me so far in my life. And I get a lot of value after uh, from their no annual fee cards, like the Inc. Business Cash, uh, 5X on Staples and Office Depot, and then the Freedom Cards, the rotating categories. I get a lot of value out of that. <coughs> Excuse me. I'll probably keep my uh, IHG business credit card forever. So I'm going to keep Chase around for a long time. So if you force me to pick, I'd say the Sapphire Reserve. Uh, John McKinstry says, I've used Hertz and Enterprise. I've gotten the best service from Enterprise. Matt says, National and Enterprise allow for Hilton points moving. Hertz can top up Marriott for sure. I think there's IHG overlap. I assume what you mean is National and Enterprise allow you to credit your rental benefits to Hilton. Because I don't know of any way to move any transferable currencies to a car rental company. I think like three years ago when I did my uh, New Year predictions, I said some issuer is going to start having transfer partners with one of the rental car companies, most likely Enterprise. And I've been wrong on that prediction for like three years now. So apparently uh, credit card issuers don't see a lot of value in making transferable currencies. And I don't even know what they're worth. I think they're worth way less than a penny a point, but let's just say hypothetically when Wells Fargo finally announces their transfer partners, what if one of their transfer partners was enterprise and it transferred one to three. So for every one Wells Fargo point, you end up with three enterprise points. Would that be a good deal? You're welcome. Cesar appreciate it. And Matt says I was correct in terms of my presumption. I'm going to take another quick look here to see if there's any other community tab questions. I don't think there are. Nope. Okay. So the last question here is guessing the location of where this taken. Sorry for the delay. There it is. There's the picture. Um, I think Filmo said it was maybe my most recent trip to Chicago or someone did. Oh, that is not my most recent trip to Chicago. So that is in London. That is the elevator inside the Greenwich foot tunnel. So there's a tunnel that goes under the Thames River that you can walk through, and there's an elevator at each end. Uh, the south end elevator is working, and that's where the picture was taken. Sure. Um, I asked uh, some random English person if they'd take our picture, and she agreed. We were all stuck in the elevator because it took like two or three minutes anyway, so it's not like she was going to steal my phone. Um, it was a gigantic elevator. I mean, it was seriously big enough you could drag, drive a car into it, which was weird since it was a uh, pedestrian-only tunnel. The other end of the tunnel, the elevator's broken, and there were people online who said things like, yeah, it's it's constantly broken. Uh, Matt Clausen assumed it was Skokie. That's a town in Illinois. Um, the only thing I did in Skokie was the Holocaust Museum. That was definitely worth doing. It reminds me that one of my uh, most loyal channel followers, his name is Jimmy James, had put a comment on the um, community tab, but it's not showing up now. And I'm so sorry, Jimmy. This is that whole thing I mentioned where sometimes YouTube just doesn't show uh, what you're asking or talking about. Let me scroll through my private notifications. Oh, yeah, here it is. He says, what would your one issuer ideal setup be? So if I could only have one points and miles ecosystem, which one would I pick? 
first of all, I'd be very sad because I like having multiple ecosystems. But if you forced me to pick, it would be Chase. Just because I've been loyal to Chase, they've given me the most consistent value. They haven't given me the most outsized value, but I know I can always get what I need to get with Chase. I'm always going to get value from my ink cards. I'm always going to get value from my Freedom and Freedom Flex cards. I've carefully built out my Chase ecosystem. I like the Aeroplan card. I like the IHG business card. So Chase has Hyatt. Chase has Aeroplan. Chase has British Airways. As someone who takes one big trip a year and a couple side trips, those three to five side trips, my rip trips are domestic and they're usually either just me or me and the boys, kind of quick hitter, long weekend type trips. Chase has come through for me many times on those. So if I had to only pick one, I would pick Chase, but I would be super sad to lose Amex and uh, Capital One. Not so sad to give up City. And hey, that's a good transition. Thanks for asking, Jimmy John. Let's go back to our live poll here and see what the results are. So if you haven't taken the poll yet, feel free. At the beginning of the live stream, I asked this question. Is it worth diversifying beyond two transferable ecosystems? In other words, Chase City, Amex, Capital One, and theoretically, Wells Fargo. So let's say you've already got two ecosystems. Is it worth, is it worth adding a third? 65% of the people who voted said yes, absolutely. 12% said yes, a little. And 23% said generally no. Um, I would say yes, a little, if I had to answer that question. And I mean in terms of ongoing value, not the initial sign-up bonuses. So obviously I signed up for the city custom cash. I signed up for the city premiere and got uh, between those two 100,000 city points. And that was definitely worth doing. Um, but I feel like on an ongoing basis, I'm not getting all that much value from them. And that brings us back around to our topic of the day, which is diminishing returns. So let me just throw out a little example. So let's just say that you've already got the Wells Fargo autograph card. And let's say, hypothetically at least, Wells Fargo does get their act together and launch their transfer partners sometime in the next five or six months. Even if they're not real exciting transfer partners, even if it's just sort of the old standards, like Flying Blue, KLM and Air France, um, Choice Hotels, um, Etihad, at least one of the obvious earning currencies, British Airways, Aer Lingus, etc. You can at least do the basics. Um, is adding the City Premier to your wallet and your ongoing rotation worth it? Well, let's just take a moment to pull up the Wells Fargo website here. I'm not going to actually launch it because it slows me down too much, but let's see what the autograph has to offer. Now, I know with certainty that 3X on dining is one of them. So I've got 3X on dining here. I've got 3X on dining here. Did I gain anything? Nope. I had zero additional returns. Travel. I get 3X here. I get 3X here. I get no additional value by adding the City Premier card. And since City has no travel protections, I don't know what Wells Fargo is going to offer in the long run. But right now, you know, if I have no travel protections and I'm adding no travel protections, I'm no, I'm no worse for the wear in terms of that. Um, transit. How about transit? Sorry, I clicked the wrong button there. Sorry, folks. I'm just not feeling super good today. My voice is a little croaky and stuff. I'm just going to put on this other screen. I know that has me looking in the wrong direction. By the way, if you're wondering why my background looks a little bit different, yesterday I was making high quality graphical interfaces, which means writing with a marker on a piece of paper. And I sneezed, lost my balance. I dropped the marker on the sheet and my wife is washing the sheets and I Really, really appreciate her for doing that. So the bed behind me is in the best shape it's ever going to be. So this is the same room where I always live stream. Just instead of the camera pointing slightly to the left, it's pointing slightly to the right. 
If you like this background better, let me know. Transit. Now, I don't think the city premier gives anything on transit, like uh, taxis, Ubers, ferry boats, shuttle buses, subways, those kind of things. So I'm getting no additional value here. If they do, and I'm, I'm misunderstanding that, let me know. Popular streaming, 3X on streaming. Do I get streaming here? Nope. Um, and phone plans. Do I get 3X on phone plans here? Nope. So if I've already got the autograph, what am I gaining by adding the city premiere? I'm adding a $95 annual fee. Uh, one thing I'm gaining is groceries. So if you're going to spend enough on groceries, it might be worth adding this card if you really like the city transfer partners. I did a previous live stream where city was the theme of the day and I did the transfer partners there. Um, but coming back around to a question that someone asked earlier in the live stream, I used to say the city transfer partners are criminally underrated. They're good, but I don't think they're criminally underrated anymore. Why? There's a truckload of overlap. Um, in fact, the only transfer partner that I would say is out, there's only two that are fairly unique. There's Turkish Miles and Smiles, although you can also get that with Capital One. And then there is Choice. Now, you can also get Choice with Capital One and with Amex. But the deal with the city premier is that your choice points will transfer at a one to two ratio over to choice hotels. Um, but other than that, wait for my video to come out next week where I talk about the case against city and you can see more details. I just think the returns you get by adding an extra ecosystem, at least if that extra ecosystem is city, is really a little bit on the disappointing side. Cesar says, thank you for answering my question. And Hertz has always got me the best price and never had any issues. And Cesar also says, I like the one to two transfer of city points to choice. Yep. Uh, we just talked about that. Thank you, Cesar. I appreciate it. Uh, I'll give a little more time here for anyone that wants to take the poll. And... Um, Leave that open and then leave it open for any more questions. Don't forget to click the like button if you've not already done that. We'll give it about another 15 minutes here before I completely wrap things up unless for some reason um, no one has any questions at all and I have nothing else to add. Never be afraid of a little silence, right? Uh, let's talk about other cards that uh, or other benefits that Wells Fargo has to answer, has to offer. Wells Fargo also has the Wells Fargo Active Cash, which is their answer to the city double cash. It's a 2% everywhere. And uh, very simple, no annual fee, 2% back everywhere. Functionally, that does become a 2x on everything card, and I have personally tested this out my dad who i who's sort of like my player three or four does have a couple wells fargo cards he has the autograph and the uh active cash and you can go on the wells fargo site and move your benefits from the active cash to the autograph so if you have uh both the autograph and the active cash effectively, you've got a credit card duo and a pretty good one, I might say. Um, basically, it just converts 2% uh, cash back into 2x points. So, you know, every dollar in cash that you have move the decimal to becomes 100 points. And you can move that to your autograph. Another thing I really like about Wells Fargo is that you can move points to other users. They don't even have to be um, an immediate family member. You can gift points to anyone. Be careful when doing that because there's two options on the Wells Fargo uh, rewards portal. There's an option to gift them. I don't remember what they call it, but basically gift them cash back and gift them points. I accidentally screwed that up once and it cost me $75. Um, so there's one option where like, let's say my dad wants to give me points he can give it to me as a statement credit at a value of one cent per point, or he can actually give me the points. And the default is the cash one. So make sure you toggle the tab there 
for um, gifting points rather than gifting cash back. But if I have uh, a wife, a dad, let's say I have an adult child and they all get Wells Fargo cards and we all want to pool those points together, they can all just gift it to me. Do you hear that, Amex? Why don't you do that? That would make life a lot easier. I really appreciate ecosystems that allow that. Uh, Chase allows that. It's a little more annoying because you have to call the first time to get it set up. But once you've done it once, you can do it again. And that's only for immediate family members or people in your household. Uh, little confession to make. Chase thinks that my parents are in my household. It helps that we have the exact same last name and live in the exact same town. So they probably never thought about it. Um, how far Chase will let you go with that? I have no idea. Let me know if you have any experience with that. Um, I don't know if City lets you transfer City points to another person or not. Let me know if you know the answer to that. Um, Capital One lets you do it too, but you have to call in. So it's a little a little annoying, but you can do it. And there's no charge for doing it. So um, I don't know about Built because I don't have the card, but I, I think every single credit card issuer, whether it's a proprietary currency or it is a uh, transferable currency, should let you transfer your points to another user penalty free. If I want to give my points to my wife or give it to my dad or give it to my third cousin, why wouldn't they allow that? Well, the reason they wouldn't allow and the reason Amex doesn't allow is because they want breakage. You know, let's say that you've got a redemption in mind with, um, I don't know, I'll say British Airways and it's a 100,000 point redemption. Well, if I have 50,000 points and my wife has 50,000 points, we have enough, but there's no way for us on the Amex side to combine them. Now I realize there's I'm pretty sure British allows point pooling. So you have to have your account open so long, make a point pool, transfer them to your British airlines account, merge the points together. But Amex knows and shame on Amex. There's a lot of people that won't be able to figure that out. So they're just going to go to the Amex travel portal and pay full price. And Amex going to rub their hands together all the way to the bank. So the reason they do it is because of breakage. So I really feel strongly that every credit card issuer, whether it's transferable points or otherwise, should let you gift your points to anyone else who has the same credit card or the same kind of credit card. Um, well, I'm coughing a lot and there's no point in dragging this out. So let's just go ahead and say goodbye for the morning. If you haven't already clicked the like button, click the like button, please to help feed the algorithm. I appreciate each of you who participated and watched live. And for those of you that have already subscribed, thank you for doing that. So those of you who have already uh, become a channel member, a Dugras diehard for $3 a month, I appreciate it. And uh, like I said, if you want to watch some of those videos that aren't available to everyone, you can cancel any time. Consider becoming a channel member. As always, may your spending be frugal and may your points be plenteous. Have a great day, everyone.